Nimebarikiwa sana. I'm, I'm so blessed to uh, be part of what God is doing in this place. And, Nime, uh, nimebarikiwa ku, kuwa mio, uh, miongoni mwenyu na kuona kile Mungu anatenda. Um, Bishop has grown to become my friend. Askofu amekuwa rafiki wangu sana. Together with his beloved wife. Uh, pamoja na mkewe mpenzi. And um, I, I speak a lot about them everywhere although they don't know. Huwa <laughs> Um, because there is a lot I learned from them from their spirit of humility. Kwa sababu kuna mambo mengi najifunza kwa ukoro yao ya uvumilivu au utulivu. And also uh, Pastor Frank, pia mchungaji Frank and his wife who is my shemeji. Na mkewe ambaye pia ni shemeji yangu. We are so proud of you people. Ah uh, tunawafurahikia sana. Pastor Dave, mchungaji Dave na wale wengine wote. We are so honored to be part of what God is doing in your lives. And we thank God for all of you. Uh, plus the entire team that stands in this place. We have been learning uh, today powerful things that have been dropped in our hearts. I am celebrating uh, uh, dear pastor uh, Emily, I celebrate you. You are a great woman. Can we celebrate God for this wonderful servant? Um, you challenged me so much. You and your husband. I don't know if they say I'm growing in love or I'm falling in love. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever the case, I think it's nice to know such a powerful people to be with us. I want just to build up from what our dear Pastor Emily has been teaching us so that we don't go far from what we have been building in the day. Emily, Emily. Oh. <laughs> okay. And um, she taught us, she spoke up a principle that was very powerful. Because from her teaching, I was trying to capture some principles that will make the kingdom manifest. And she was looking at the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2. Digging out some of the principles that can make us manifest the kingdom. And one of the powerful things that I captured was the ability to enter into your office. Understanding where God has gifted and graced your life and entering that place. Because you can never manifest the kingdom until you enter the place that God has ordained for your life. Amen. And so I picked up that point so strongly to begin to understand that we can manifest the kingdom only when we enter a place of calling. When we understand and discern a place of calling. Because God can only use us when we uh, uh, access the place that he has desired that our lives may function on this face of the earth. And I learned a lot from Timothy's life when she was teaching us. Trying to bring to us some of the principles that will make us manifest the kingdom. Can somebody say amen? And I want just to go on. Maybe I don't know which point. Maybe I had put a comma. Can you continue? One of the ways we can manifest the kingdom in our generation. But I want to pick up from where she left. And 
is you must discern your divine connection. Discern your divine connection. There is somewhere that God has ordained your life to be connected. Then the kingdom shall begin to manifest in your life. There are some personalities. There are some ministries. There are places. There are some churches. That God has ordained that when our lives arrive. When our lives join up. When our lives access. We don't struggle to manifest the kingdom. Things begin to flow. Things begin to be seen. Because you have connected yourself. To your divine connection. Can somebody say amen? amen. I want to humbly present to you. That you may understand. Certain people. Certain ministries. Certain churches. In every generation. When we join them. When we enter them. They cause the heavens to open over our lives. Certain things begin to open up to us out of our arrival in that place. Are you hearing me? Every time you access such a place, certain things begin to happen in your life that were not prior happening to your life. It means the Lord has ordained that our lives are positioned somewhere so that the kingdom may manifest. And once you connect to that place, there are new dimensions, there are new frontiers, there are new graces that begin to manifest in your life because of your connection to that place. Praise the name of the Lord. Such a place have aligned themselves to the mind and heart of God. But as we, you connect to that place, you don't struggle to see the flow that comes into your life. Such a place will make your life shine. Some of us were somewhere and we were not finding the bearing of our life until we connected somewhere that we began to find the bearing of our lives. This place may be a person. Somebody that God has brought to your life and he wants you to discern and connect to that person because as you connect, there is somewhere they are taking your life to manifest. Can somebody say amen? That's why if you look in your Bible, Abraham and Lot are following each other. They are moving together. Because Abraham has received the grace of open heavens and fellowship with God and Lot gets the grace to walk with him. The Bible records as long as Lot was connected to him. When he was with him, every time God blessed Abraham, he blessed Lot. Every time the kingdom manifested to Abraham, manifested to Lot. Because of the connection they had. They were knit together. They honored each other. They moved together. Lot must have acknowledged that this man in the beginning is a connection. He's not just a a relative, he is a connection that I need to bind my life unto. Hallelujah. 
How do you see the people that come to your life? Are they just mere people and mere friends? Or they are connections? Can somebody say amen? If you look at the life of Ruth and Naomi, you realize another connection. A woman that came to a family. Very young. Married to one of the sons of Naomi. But unfortunately, he passes on. But this lady must have understood. I didn't just come here for marriage. This is a connection. It takes revelation for you to, be, to stick somewhere. You can never stick somewhere that you have no revelation about. <laughs> if you understand the value of where you are, you can never be talked out of that place. Even if there are all conditions that I want to take you out, you will stay because you know there is something beyond what is happening naturally right now. And so Ruth stuck in that place. Even when she was given opportunity that she may leave, that she may go, she stuck in that place. She said, I'm not going anywhere. She must have gotten a revelation. But I didn't just come to marry. This is a connection. This is a privilege. Because where I come from, at the Moabites, they have a curse. Are you hearing me? And I know I've gotten an opportunity to be connected to these people that come from the house that is blessed. So I'm not leaving. Even though you give me a chance, I am stuck here because I see more. There is something here that I need to connect myself. I know when I'm here, the curse that I've been fighting in my foundation shall be broken. And that's how she saw the revelation. And she followed Naomi up to the end. And surely at the end God manifested in her life. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a divine connection that you, begin, you need to begin to decide. There is somebody you need to know more than you know. No. Somebody say amen. amen. This connection may be your husband. It may be your wife. It may be your parents. They are not just parents. They are a connection. But the Lord has submitted you under. But as you follow them, as you serve them, as you pursue them, there is somewhere the kingdom shall manifest in your life. If you hear me, can you shout amen? Somebody, can you shout amen like you mean it? So one way we can be able to bring about the kingdom to manifest is understand, discern the divine connection and connect yourself to that place. Don't depart from that place even if you have all reasons to do that. Because it has something to do with your becoming. This, the next thing that I want to bring to your life which I really want to bring passionately to you that will open the kingdom and when I talk of the kingdom, I'm talking about the heavens will open to you and God of the heavens shall be able to be seen in your life. One of the things that you need to understand apart from discerning your divine connection is the principle of sonship. The principle of sonship. This is a strange term in our generation. Because not many people understand what it means to be a son. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Wapendwa. I want to begin with Luke chapter 3 from verse 21. Luka 3 akuanzia pale 21. If you look at Luke chapter 3 verse number 21 to uh, verse number 23. Luka 3 tafadhali tuweke Luka 3. You will begin to understand and appreciate what we want to share now. Utaanza kuweza kuelewa kile ambacho tunataka kushirikia. The principle of sonship. Kanuni ya ukuwa mwana. The Bible says when all uh, the people were baptized it came to pass that Jesus also was baptized and while he prayed the heavens opened. Katimia wakati watu walikuwa wanabatizwa na ikafika wakati Yesu alipobatizwa and wakati alikuwa naomba basi bingu ikafunguka. In verse number 22 And the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form. We are seeing the kingdom. We are seeing the supernatural coming to Jesus Christ. Descended like a dove upon him and a voice from heaven which said, "You are my beloved what?" Wewe ndiye mwana wangu mpendwa. You are my beloved son. Wewe ndiye mwana wangu mpendwa. In you I am well pleased. Na kwako wewe nimefurahikia. Now I want you to look at this. Angalia hivi. Because here we see the heavens opening up to somebody because of sonship. Tunaona mbingu zikifunguka kwa sababu ya kuwa mwana. We are seeing the heavens manifesting and coming into somebody's life because of the principle of sonship. Mbingu zinafunguka na tunaona kwa sababu ya hii kwa kanuni ya kuwa mwana. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the things that you need to capture in your life if you want to see the heavens opening up and you walking under open heavens and enjoying the fellowship of heaven, you must understand the place of sonship in your life. Lazima uelewe mahali pa wana katika maisha yako. Because sons provoke heavens to open up. Kwa sababu wana wanasababisha mbingu kufunguka. It takes a church that has members that understand sonship that will open the heavens. Ina karimu kanisa ambalo watu wanaelewa wa kanuni ya wana ili kwamba ifungue mbinguni. Are you hearing me my friends? Wanisikiza rafiki? It takes a church. Ina karimu kanisa that its members understand. Ya kwamba washiriki wanaelewa the principle of sonship. Kanuni za wana that the heavens are open to that place. Ili kwamba mbingu zitafunguka. The heavens opened up. Mbingu zikifunguka because there was a son. Kwa sababu pana mwana. The beloved son. Mwana aliyempenda was being baptized ambaye anabatizwa it was not just a believer haikuwa tu muumini it was not just a christian haikuwa tu mkristo it was not just a member haikuwa tu mshiriki it was a son ni mwana hear me very well Nanisikiza. you can be in a church unaweza kuwa kanisa as a member kama mshiriki but not a son lakini si mwana you can be in a church unaweza kuwa kanisa as a believer kama muumini but not a son lakini si mwana And listen to me if if you want to see the kingdom manifesting in your life you must understand you going higher than being a believer and a member into enrolling to become a son Lazima uelewe zaidi ya kuwa tu mkristo ama mshirika ili kwamba uelewe ukwe mwana I've come to realize Nimekuja kutambua the program and all the agenda and all Uh, the kingdom business hinges around sonship mikakati ya binguni inahusiana na wana it's about sonship ni kukuwa mwana first john chapter 3 verse number 1 yohana 3 moja first john chapter 3 verse 1 yohana 3 moja the love of god upendo wa mungu that was bestowed upon us ambayo iliwekwa juu yetu it made us to be sons ili sababisha tuwe wana through Christ Jesus kupitia Kristo Yesu the whole one man of love atazama upendo uliomkuwa the father bestowed on us ambayo bwana ametuwekea that we should be called the children of god ya kwamba tuitwe wana wa mungu the sons of god wana wa mungu therefore the world does not know us kwa sababu kwa hivyo dunia haitujui because it did not know him kwa sababu haikumjua are you hearing The world did not understand how Jesus related with the Father. Dunia haikuelewa Yesu alihusianaje na Baba. They didn't understand the secret behind the manifestation that was moving in Jesus life. Hawakuelewa udhihirisho ambao ulikuwa unaenda katika maisha ya Yesu. It was from the context of sonship. Ilikuwa kutokana na kuwa mwana. God was manifesting in Jesus because of sonship. Mungu alikuwa anadhihirisha kwa Kristo
Kristo kwa sababu ya kuwa mwana. No wonder Romans chapter 8 verse 19. Ndipo Warumi 1:19. The Bible writes. Biblia inasema for the whole creation. Kutoka kwa kwa umbile wote. Is eager expectation. Iko na matarajio. Of the manifestation. Kwa sababu ya kudhihirishwa. Of which kind of people? Ah watu wa gani? Come on which kind of people? Watu wapi? The true sons of Wana wa kweli wa Mungu. It takes you to be a son for the kingdom to manifest. Inagarimu wewe kuwa mwana ili kwamba ufalme udhihirike. You cannot be manifested until you understand the context of sonship. Hauwezi ukadhihirika kabla uelewe kuhusiana kuhusia na wana kwa wana. For you ever to become great, for you ever to be revealed wherever you are, it takes sonship in that place. Ili kwamba utambulike ama ukue mkuu inahitaji wana mahali pale. The kingdom does not reveal just believers. It reveals, it manifests the sons that have attached themselves to the sonship relationship that is given in the word of God. Falme hautambulizi tu kuwa muumini lakini inataka mtu ambaye ameamua kuwa mwana katika ufalme wa bingu. Ladies and gentlemen, mwapendwa. Matthew chapter 7 verse 7. Matthew Matthew 7:7. I know there you know it you can you can even read it uh, by hand Come on let's go together Ask and what Namtapa shall be given to you eh Seek and what will happen Namtapa You find eh No and what will happen Namtafungu It will be open unto you That's where we end Hapo ndio tunamalizia That's where we stop Tunamalizia mahali pale We don't ever go down Hatuendi chini to understand the context of asking Ili kwamba tuelewe kuhusiana na kuuliza We don't ever go down Hatuendi chini to see the next verse Tuangalie mahali pale pengine So that we can understand the context Tukaweze kuelewa na uhusiano na nini Let's go to verse number 9 verse verse 8 let's go together Let's read together let's go for everyone who asks that's what anapata and he who seeks that's what atafutae and to him who knocks what will happen it will be opened okay? then let's go look at verse number 9 because it's a continuation uh-huh. let's go let's read together now let's go or what man is there among you who if his what come on in his what ask for what Kate. will give him a what atapewa jiwe this is asking of sons ni kuuliza kwa wana This is not just asking of everybody. It is sonship. Ni wana. It is sons ni... coming to ask. Ni... Sons coming to knock. Sons coming to find that it is about sons. Ni mwana anakuja na anabisha. Mwana anakuja anatafuta. Ni kuhusiana na mwana. Ladies and gentlemen, God will give in relation to your sonship. Mungu atakupatia kulingana na kuwa mwana kwako. When who us receives because he is a son it's not just because he is a christian mm sio kwa sababu tu ni mkristo bali ni mwana if there is anything I want to share with you that we have lost in our generation that has made the, the heavens to shut up on us is the spirit of sonship we have lost this many people are competing with fathers they don't want to take their position and be sons and be raised and be nurtured and be released from that platform ladies and gentlemen we have lost a very important aspect the aspect of sonship this is what we are calling upon uh, in Malachi chapter 4 from verse number 5 to 6 the bible writes something about sonship in relation to preparation dispensation there was a dispensation that was to come but before the dispensation was released there was something about sonship that was to be brought in context The Bible says in verse number 5 Paletano Behold I'll send you Elijah Kasamana mtuma Elijah the prophet Nabi before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord Kabla siku ile kuu ya bwana ijawadia verse number 6 sita and he will turn the hearts of which people na ataweza kubadilisha mioyo ya nani he will turn the hearts of which people ya nani the fathers to who ah baba and and to and, and, and what 
and and lest lest what will happen na nini itatendeka lest what will happen nini itatendeka the earth is stricken with the what dunia itapigwa na laana where people are not relating what mahali ambapo watu hawahusiani on sonship katika kuwa mwana they open the environment to a curse wanafungua nafasi kwa sababu ya laana where people don't esteem sonship mali ambapo watu hawaheshimu au kwa mwana they open the place to a curse wanafungua nafasi ya laana that's why Niposa. you can get somebody so eloquent but struggling in what they are doing unaweza pata mtu anaongea vema sana lakini anakazana na yale anafanya they are not having a breakthrough hawapati ufanisi ama ushindi upenyo it's not about eloquence sio kwa sababu wanaweza kuongea sana christianity is about relationship ukristo inahusiana na uhusiano If you want to succeed in this you need to understand the power of relationship. Kama wataka kufaulu katika mambo haya lazima uelewe nguvu ya uhusiano. Ladies and gentlemen, wapendwa. When we don't have son and father relationship. Tukikosa kuwa na ile uhusiano ya baba na mwana. Then we are missed a very important principle of kingdom manifestation. Basi tunakosea kanuni moja kuu ya udhihirisho wa ufalme. Our God is is a father. Mungu wetu ni baba. We is associated with sons. Ambaye anahusiana na wana. Just like a master is associated with servants. Kama vile mkubwa anahusiana na mtu afanyaye kazi. Our God is about sons. Mungu wetu anahusiana na wana. Because he is a father. Sababu yeye ni baba. You can never talk of a father without sons. Hauongei kuhusu baba bila mwana. If we call our God father. Tukimuita Mungu wetu baba. And we must understand our position as sons. Lazima tuelewe nafasi yetu kama wana. It is only in that relationship. Ni wakati tu katika uhusiano ule. The father will manifest the kingdom. Ya kwamba ufalme utadhihirika. Our churches. Kanisa zetu not manifesting the kingdom inakosa kudhihirisha ufalme we don't have sense kwa sababu tuna wana we have believers tuna waumini we have members tuna waashirika but we don't have sense lakini tuna wana ladies and gentlemen wapendwa that's why ni posa i want to humbly present to you to know ni waleteeni kwamba mjue right from Genesis. Tangia mwanzo. And I know you may not understand it. Na unaweza kosa kuelewa. But let's look at what Luke chapter 3 verse 38 says. Luke uh, Luke Luke 3. Luke 3:38. The last scripture. Uh, pale mwisho. What does this man say? Yesemani. Because you'll tell me what of Adam? What of those, that man? Mhm. Utaniambia kuhusu Adam na wengine. What of this man? Huyu naye ni aje. The Bible says. Biblia yasema. It gives it gives the line of the sons and the sons and the sons. Inapeana laini ya wana na wana na wana. And it comes to the last scripture. Na inakuja pale mwisho. It says the son of Enosh. Mwana wa Enosh. The son of Seth. Mwana wa Seth. The son of Ed, Adam. Mwana wa wa mwana Adam. So Adam was was who Adam was who to God. Mwana wa Mungu. Adam was who to God. Adam alikuwa wanani kwa Mungu. God's agenda hinges around sonship. Mikakati ama shughuli za Mungu zinahusiana na kuwa mwana. If you miss that, you have lost your context and your place in this kingdom. Ukilikosa hilo basi unakosa nafasi yako katika ufalme huu. Even when God was creating Adam. Hata Mungu akimuumba Adamu. He was not just creating him as a person. Hakuwa tu anamuumba tu kama mtu. He created him as a son. Akamuumba kama mwana. It was about sonship. Ilikuwa kuhusiana na wana. The relationship. Aile uhusiano. It was based on that that he could enjoy the authority. Ilikuwa ina... He could manifest the glory because he was created to be a son. Kwa sababu aliumbwa awe mwana. Ladies and gentlemen, wapendwa. I want you to know. Ningependa mtambue. The plan of God on the face of the earth. Mipangilio ya Mungu hapa duniani. Hinges around sons. Inahusiana na kuwa wana. And not just mere people. Na si tu watu wa kawaida. It's about sons. Ni kuhusu mwana. And I want to challenge you today. Na nikutia changamoto. If you want to experience the kingdom ukitaka kudhihirisha ufalme you want to see manifesting in your life ufalme udhihirike maisha yako understand your place elewa mahali yako as a son kama mwana as a daughter kama msichana wherever you are binti ambayo uko mali you need to take your position chukua nafasi and begin to serve uanze kuhudumia platform mahali pale of a son kama mwana in that family 
family. Kamali familia ile. Somebody say amen. Please help me to talk to your neighbor's oh. neighbor. Are you a son wherever you are? Jirani yako wewe ni mwana mahali uliko? Come on ask your neighbor who are you where you are? Wewe ni nani mahali uliko? Are you just a passerby? Wewe tu ni mtu anapita njia? Are you just a good shabik? Wewe tu ni mtu wa kutetea wa kushabiki? Are you just a fan of the preachings? Oh wewe ni mshabiki wa mahubiri? That normally happen wherever you go. Oh ambayo unasikia mahali uendako. You know men of God have different people in the church. Kuna watu wengi tofauti katika kanisa. We have mashabik. Kuna wale mashabiki. Who enjoy your preaching? Oh wanafurahia mahubiri. They say that guy preaches. Oh huyo mtu alihubiri. But we really have sons. Lakini tunakosa wana. Sons is about now kingdom business you will never entrust and god will never entrust kingdom business except on a son mungu hatakupatia wewe hata hata kuheshimia shughuli za biashara ya mbinguni kama wewe si mwana if you want to enjoy to walk with the lord understand your place as a son take your place as a son wherever you enter be it in the church be it in a ministry be it in a family understand the place of sonship take that place and i can assure you the kingdom will be manifested in your life amen chukua mahali pale na nikuhakikishie kwamba ufalme utadhirika kama ishani mwako. Wanisikiza sema amen. Learn how to become a son wherever you are. Tifunze kuwa mwana kokote uliko. Because the calling of God even unto our lives. Kwa sababu mwito wa Bwana katika maisha yetu. It's the calling of sonship. Ni mwito wa wana. Can somebody say amen? Bwana mtu aseme amen. If you look at Genesis chapter 3 verse number 7. Mwanzo 3:7 And as to look at that context. Tuweze kuangalia mahali pale. In Genesis 3 verse number 7. Mwanzo 3:7. The Bible says Biblia yasema Then the eyes of both of them were open. Macho yao yakafunguka. And they knew that they were naked. Na wakatambua wako uchi. They sewed the leaves together and made themselves coverings. Wakachukua matawi ili wajifunike. That's number 8. Biblia inaendelea. And they heard the sound of uh, of the Lord God walking in the garden. Na wakasikia sauti ya Mungu ikitembea katika pale shambani. Mchana mchana. And Adam and uh, uh, Adam and his wife he themselves na adam na mkewe wakajificha kutoka kwa uwepo wa mungu among the trees katika miti na kumi, kumi as you go down you begin to understand kumi tukiendelea chini of course nine the lord called out na tisa mungu akamwita said to him where are you adam uko wapi where are you uko wapi and he said i heard your voice nalisikia sauti yako shambani and i was afraid because i was naked nikaogopa sababu nilikuwa myself. Ladies and gentlemen, what, what am I trying to bring to you? God is looking for sons wherever they are. Mungu yuatafuta wana mahali waliko. Because from the context of creation you can see he is a son. Kwa sababu kutoka mwanzo unaona ni mwana. When God seeks Mungu akitafuta. He seeks on the basis of sonship. Anatafuta kuhusiana na wana. He wants sons. Anataka wana. Wherever they are lost. Mali wamepotelea. Wherever they have gone. Mali wameenda. Wherever they have lost focus. Mali wamepoteza mwelekeo. He's looking for sons. Anatafuta wana. Because kingdom agenda. Kwa sababu mambo ya ufalme. Kingdom manifestation. Udhirisho wa ufalme is actually attached to sonship. Inashikana inaunganishwa na wana. I challenge you today. Niwaletee Every time you come back to the Lord. Mali unakuja kwa Mungu. And come back to wherever you Kuta mali uliko. Come and become a son. Kuta kama mwana. Take your place as a son. Tuko nafasi kama mwana. Because that is the only place. Kwa sababu ndipo tu mahali. That the kingdom shall manifest. Ambapo ufalme utadhirika katika maisha yako. Immediately you enroll as a son. Mali unajiunganisha kama mwana. Then you become basi unakuwa the candidate for kingdom manifestation um, moja wa wale wa ufalme wa Mungu. I challenge you today. Nikuulize leo. Who are you wherever you are? Wewe ni nani mali uliko? Ask yourself, who are you? Si ulize we ni nani? Are you just a passerby? Wewe ni mtu tu wa pita njia. Are you just passing by? Wa pita njia tu. God wants you to rethink. Mungu ataka uasi. Your relationship. Uhusiano wako. Wherever you are. Mali uliko. Because it's only on sonship. Kwa sababu tu ni wana. That you can be trusted. Ya kwamba utaweza kuwa chimio. Kingdom business. Au shughuli ya ufalme. The kingdom is looking for sons. Ufalme unatafuta mwana. And every time it goes out. Na ikienda kila wakati. It is looking for sons. Yatafuta mwana. I challenge you. Nikuulize. If you want to see the kingdom manifesting. Ungalipenda kuona ufalme ukidhirika. Become a son. Kuwa mwana. In the house. Katika nyumba. I say become a son. Kuwa mwana. In the house. Katika nyumba. I say again become a son. Kuwa mwana. In the house. Katika nyumba. Wherever you are. Mali uliko. Become a son. Kuwa mwana. And you will not struggle. Na utakazana. To see 
things happen. You will not do too much prayer that people do on the mountains. No. You will always enjoy the grace that flows from the Father because of your relationship in that place. I challenge you when this Convention comes to the end. Begin to take your position as a son. Because the kingdom is looking for sons. Not for great men. Not for great ministers. But for sons. If you can become a son, it doesn't matter how weak you are, how unlearned you are. In sonship, you can become anything. I promise you and I speak to, uh, this to you today because I understand 2019 is a year of great move of God in Kenya. Are you hearing me? This year is not a common year. It's a year of great move. And I understand for God to move it takes an atmosphere of sons. I've told you in Malachi before God will release the next dispensation he had to repair the relationship of son and father there was no way a move could be found on the land without the relationship being restored I call you back to sonship ladies and gentlemen I call you back to sonship just take your place and Jehovah God shall manifest himself through your life. Come on, ask me again, your neighbor, oh. just ask, who are you, where you are? Come on, tell your neighbor, who are you, where you are? Because it's not just about service. Bishop, we desire to have servants that are first sons. Before they serve, they need to be sons. Before they take any position, they need to be sons. It is only on that relationship that the heavens will manifest in that ministry. The reason why we are struggling in many ministries is because people have not taken their place as sons. We have competitors, we have rivals. We we have people that are trying to be who we are. Oh, what wana ngangana tu kuwa ambayo yule mwingine ni? They will never be who we are. Lakini yawezi kuwa sisi, kuwa sisi. They have never taken our journey. Kwa sababu hawaja chukua safari yetu. They have never paid our price. Hawaja lipa gharama yetu. They have never known where we came from. Hawaja jua tulitoka wapi. Let me advise you. Wacha nikueleze. Just take your place as a son. Eh, chukua nafasi kama mwana. Just take that place. Kama mwana. I promise you. Nikueleze. The heavens will take you higher. Mingu itakuinu wa zaidi. That is the challenge. And I believe before the move that is coming in 2019 I want to share with you and I believe God has sent me to speak to you because I can assure you there is a move in 2019. I tell you there is a move in 2019 and this move requires it doesn't require ministers. First of all, let you be a son. Praise the name of the Lord. Man, one of the things that will make the kingdom manifest is sonship. Sonship. You need to learn 
that you are a son somewhere. That's how God has ordained your life to be. The last thing I want to share because of this moment. Because as we shall be coming to the end of this session. I will be asking humbly. Because in the house. We have a dad. We have a mom. We want a dad and a mom. To speak to us. Pray for us. As sons. Because that thing has messed us. And has short circuited. The pace that God had begun in our lives. Some of us could be far. But we missed that. When God began to use us. We forgot we are sons. And we began to go our way. And we broke that relationship. Ladies and gentlemen. When you come back to that relationship, I promise you in the name of Jesus, God will manifest his kingdom through your life in 2019. The last thing I want to share with you, that will be able to make the kingdom manifest in your life. Is strategic positioning. Where have you placed yourself? Strategic position. Because positioning yourself rightly will provoke heavenly response to your life. God has ordained our lives to be somewhere. That's why when he created Adam and Eve the son. He didn't just throw him in the world. Genesis 2 7 says he, 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 he made a garden in Eden and placed him there. He didn't just throw him everywhere. He, he put him in a specific place physically. He put him somewhere. And, and, and if you look at Genesis 3.8 You'll see in the cool of the day Adam doesn't need faith He doesn't need a lot of things He only needs position In the cool of the day God will come The heavens will manifest and the voice of God would be hard walking in the garden looking for him because there was a place that he was ordained to be planted and as long as he was in that place he could not struggle to attract heavens but heavens would manifest the Lord would come to visit as long as he was in Eden and the Bible says he could come in the cool of the day walking in the garden and he would ask where are you? where are you Adam? where are you? because there is a place he expects him to be but when Adam left the place he lost the, the visitation the presence, the manifestation. It means there is a place. There is a position. There is a physical location that God has ordained for you and me. That we may be able to be so that the kingdom may manifest. I thank God there are some people that are called in different locations. Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy to be there. Enjoy to be in that place. Don't break yourself out of that place. Even if you are influenced. Because the day you do that, the grace that flows in your life, you'll be surprised that it will no longer flow. 
Learn the power of positioning. Learn to maintain your right position. Know how to put yourself in the right place. If you look at John chapter 5. Look at what is written in that scripture. The Bible keeps a story that is interesting. In John chapter 5. After this there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And verse number 2 there was says. Now there was in Jerusalem by the ship get a pool which is called in Hebrew Bethesda having five porches. And the Bible says in verse number three in this lay a great multitude of sick people, people that have strategically positioned themselves in this place. Blind and lame and paralyzed and waiting for the move, for the move, eh? for the moving of the water. They understood there was a season that the kingdom manifested. And there was a specific place that the kingdom manifested. Verses for an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. In other words, the Bible is telling us there is need for you to understand the power of strategic position. Learn to be where you are supposed to be. Learn to be where you are supposed to be. Don't live where you are supposed to be at a given time because you will miss the grace, the dispensation that is supposed to and, and, and channel to your life. The Bible gives a story, it should be in the book of 2 Samuel chapter 11. It gives a story of David. And it, it begins very uh, uh, funny. Uh, and look at what, look at the wordings. It happened in the spring of the year at the time when which people go out to battle. Which people? Mm. This it is a time that these people go for battle. This is a battle for kings. It's not a battle for other, it's a battle for kings. But David decided to send Joab and the servants. He, he felt like I'm not going. Let me hang around. Watch Watch my boys wafanye job. Praise the Lord. Amen. Bwana sifiwe. Bwana sifiwe sana. He he felt like I think I've done enough. Let these others go and me I'll hang around. Oh, akaona ah, mimi nimefanya kazi mingi. Wacha wengine waende na mimi nitatuliza tu. Let me just be around. Wacha nituliza tu. This is a battle of kings. Hii ni vita ya wafalme. But he's sending somebody in the battle of kings. Lakini anatuma mtu katika vita vya wafalme. He should lead the battle. Badala aongoze vita. He should be the frontliner. But he decided to, to hand over. And the Bible gives us the story of what happened. When you are in the wrong place. At the right time. You will do miracles. You will do wonders. Let's look at one of the wonders that happened. Let's go together, verse number two. So David remained in Jerusalem. So then it happened. What happened? Kings have gone for battles. The man has remained in Jerusalem. Come on, let's go together in this miracle. Can we read aloud? Then it happened what? One evening that David arose from his bed and what did what? Walked on, Walked the, on roof the roof of the, of the king's, king's house. house. Uh -huh. 
And, and from, from the roof, roof what is happening here now? He saw a woman bathing. Are you seeing the miracles happening? Of somebody that is in the wrong place at the right time. People have gone in the battle. What people, people have gone for mission. What people have gone for somewhere. What and you feel me? I'm not going. Oh, miss, yendi. Okay. Let's look at the miracle as it is for me. So what happened? Look at the miracle, the formation of miracle. Verse 3, let's go. So David did what? Send and what? Inquired, Inquired about the what? The miracle, isn't it? So what happens? Somebody said, this is not true. You know, he look at the information very clear. David, the well, person... This is not who. It's, it's not this who. Who you see? Bathsheba. Who you see Bathsheba? Who you? Who is this Bathsheba, David? The daughter of who? Mstiana wa Eliamu. And not just that one. Who is she? She also. The wife of Bibi Auraya. Huh? Bibi Auraya. Very good. Very good description. A loyal soldier. Ah, um, to me she ambayo amheshimu. This is the wife. Awe yu nimkewe. Not only that. The daughter of Eliam. Mwana ama binti ya Eliamu. You know who the Eliam is to your kingdom. Unajua Eliamu ni nani kwa ufalme wako. David, this is the person. Uyu ndiye. But look at the person who is at the wrong place at the right time. Lakini angalia mtu aliye mahali ambapo hapa fai. Verse number four. Ine. What is happening? Let's go. David said, send who? Daudi akatuma. And do and did what? They took her and she did what? She came to him and what did he do? The miracle happened. And so? Uh -huh. You can imagine. You know how the miracle formed. To somebody who is in the wrong place at the right time. You need to understand the power of being in the right. When, you are, when, when your team is going somewhere. Don't bring too much excuses. Learn to be where others are for the mission at hand. Because when you don't do that, you expose yourself to things that will happen to your life. I'm talking about strategic positioning. Learn to be where he was strategically to be at the right time for the sake of the mission of the hour. Mali mikakati inaruhusu uwe wakati ambapo unaitajika kuwa wakati wakati. You will make yourself to manifest the kingdom. Utaweza kusababisha ufalme udhirike. Somebody can you say amen? O mtu naaseme amina. Come on, somebody can you say amen? Mtu naaseme amina. Ladies and gentlemen. Wapendwa. Uh, God giving us grace. Mungu akitupa neema. Uh, uh, we, we will be digging deep to understand how to enroll yourself maybe tomorrow in kingdom reward system. Tutakuwa tukijifunza jinsi ya kuweza kujiweka sambamba na kulipwa kwa ufalme wa Mungu. How can you enroll your life? Unaweza kujiwekeza vipi? In kingdom reward system. Katika hali ya kulipwa na katika ufalme. We will be looking at that in the in the people we shall be sharing tomorrow. Tutakuwa tutaongea na watu ambao tutakuwa tunashirikiana na wao kesho. I want us to know. Nataka tutambue. It's possible to manifest the kingdom. Inawezekana kudhihirisha ufalme. But learn that it takes some principles. Lakini jifunze inahitaji kanuni kadhaa. It takes some principles. Let's bow down our heads. In the name of Jesus. We give you praise Lord. We worship your holy name. Because you are our God. You are our King Jesus. You are our Master. This evening. You've called us on this table. That you may speak to us. That you may call us back. To the spirit of sonship. Because there is something you want to manifest. And you can't do it until we come to embrace the spirit of sonship. Until we position ourselves. As sons. We cannot manifest the kingdom. I pray that you are bringing us to this spirit again. In the name of 
Lord Jesus. Receive it in love. We stand to acknowledge the mantle of fatherhood. We stand to acknowledge the office of a father. We stand to acknowledge that office that you gave unto us as your children. And we pray, Jehovah God, the Lord God Almighty, you will make us appreciate. You will make us tap into it. You will make us understand it. And walk in this office. Because your kingdom agenda hinges around sonship. And I pray that in this generation there shall be found sons. Sons in the house. Sons in the kingdom. Sons that will stand in the will of the Father. In the name of Jesus. I pray that from this evening you are returning the spirit of sonship into the house. In the name of Jesus. The Lord from now we will relate as sons in the kingdom we thank and we bless you because you have done it Lord I pray that you are, you are strategically positioning everyone here as we enter into the new season and with the dispensation you are bringing Father I pray position everyone here in a place that they shall tap into this dispensation in the name of Jesus we thank you Lord because you have done it in Jesus name Amen, Amen. and us now to take this honor as we said and us to bring the daddy and, and I want us to honor that office in a better way. And we stand up on our feet. And can we just allow the voice of our daddy to speak in us as sons and usher us into the next grace. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.